Who am I allowed to go to sleep to last? Yeah. Good to, yeah, right? Good to see everybody. Everybody has one of the little charts. That doesn't have a lot to say on it as far as scriptures, and that's what the back page is for. Or, there is on the front that are blank, you can write in there as well. Does everybody have a chart? All right. Be sure to let people know they are on the back table back there. And that's why we're using slides so you can see the verses. These yep. six verses right here are going to kind of cover a great majority of what we'll actually get into details with. So if you want to go ahead and write those verses down on your chart while I'm making some introductory comments, that would be a good place to start. Before we begin, though, does anybody have any announcements that we need to update? Anybody need prayers? I have one. Our neighbor, yes. Madeline Pippen, she's, wait, she's waiting on a test, the results of the test. She's afraid she might have to cancel. Okay. So, so I told her we would pray for her. Remember her in our prayers. Thank you. Imagine y'all say she's a good friend of Sheila. My child will play shorter pieces in very serious condition. She's got a lot of serious problems, including a leaky heart and diabetes and full of fluids. So you need to lead us in her prayer. All right. Okay. Keep that one in our prayers as well. Anybody else? All right. Before we uh, begin our actual study, we'll bow our heads and go to our Heavenly Father and prayer, if you will, with me as we begin. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we with humbleness of heart approach that great throne of grace, thanking you, Father, for this beautiful Lord's day that you've blessed us with, for the opportunity we have to come out upon this day and glorify your great and matchless name. We thank you, Father, for your love and your tender mercies that you show to us, realizing that we are weak and sinful creatures, and we thank you, God, for sending your Son to die upon the cross and giving us the word that we may read it and study it and meditate upon it and apply it to our lives that we may find forgiveness of our sins through that blood that was shed on that cross and that now we can come to you in prayer through our Savior who is making intercession and mediating between you and us this time. Father, we thank you for all your blessings. We pray, Father, that you'll bless those that have just been mentioned as in need of you in some way, physical health problems. We pray, Father, your blessings upon them. Bless those that are mentioned in our bulletin that we keep in mind from time to time. You know all of these that have these various needs. We simply ask you, Father, to bless them. We pray, Father, that you bless each and every one of us. And we thank you, Father, for giving us the health and the mind to be able to come out this morning and at this time to open up your word and study a portion of it. Pray, Father, that you be with me as the teacher, that you bless me. Be with those that are listening and students, that you bless them as they listen to these things and then take and apply these things and have a greater knowledge of your will and your way. We pray, Father, that you will bless each and every one of us as we continue down through life and may, at the end of life's journey, may we hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, is our prayer in Jesus' name. A little chart that you have before you is kind of little. It's one I made up. It's not original with me by no means. I've seen other versions just like it. But that's the one I've kind of compiled for our study today. Of course, none of the original material is original with me because it's supposed to come from the Bible. <laughs> so anything you hear, you probably already read. If you read the Bible through, you probably read it uh, a number of times. Uh, since this is our first class officially, you might say, in a series, I taught one class way back when, uh, the Seven Pillars of the Church, you may remember that, I used PowerPoint quite often, slides. Uh, we're not going to use slides for every verse. Usually what I do is put up some slides, uh, at least for this particular class, put up some slides that do have some of the main verses that I want us to think about, and then I have little slips of paper that I hand out to people that desire to read, and uh, even on the paper I give you the verse written out. Not just, say, Proverbs 2 and verse 3 or whatever, it's actually going to have the verse written out by it. 
and that way you can participate in that way as well. I encourage you also to turn in your Bibles and open them up so you can see it for yourself in the, in the Bible you're comfortable with. Because I had one that I lost, unfortunately, that I had for many, many years. Had all my notes inside of it and everything. And sometimes I wouldn't know the particular book, chapter, and verse. But I know where it's at on a certain page in my Bible. I could just flip over and there it was. So it's kind of unique how we all have our different little uh, ideas and, and tacks about studying the Word of God. There are some preliminary things that I want us to think about before I actually get into this study since this is our first time. Every teacher is a little different in the way they present things, in the way that they do things, in the way that they say things, and I'm different. I just come right out and tell you I'm a little different. I like to stick with the Bible as much as I can, making a very few comments, and I like participation in class. Probably today you won't get as much because we're kind of introducing a lot of things. But first of all, I want to thank you for being here in our study together, God's Word, because that is a journey. Okay, and that's what we want it to be. We want it to feel like a journey that we can gain a lot of, out of it, grow from our time together, grow deeper and closer to God and a better understanding of God's Word. As your teacher, I'm honored to be guiding you in this study. However, I'm going to come right up front. Some teachers don't like to do this, but I come right up front. I don't know everything. <laughs> That's God's job. Okay? You may have certain questions. I may just have to say, I don't know. And I, if I think it's something that I might find in the Bible, I may tell you, well, I have to look that up, do some more research on it, because I don't know everything. That's God's job. I love Deuteronomy 29, verse 29, whenever it comes to talking about this, because it says the secret things belong to who? God. All right? So he's got some things that we just won't know. If we knew everything, what would we be? It'd be God omniscient, all-knowing. Okay? We don't know everything. God's the only one that knows everything. So we got to rely on Him. But that verse doesn't stop there. It says there's some things we don't know. Okay? Some of the secret things belong to God. But then it says what? But those things which are revealed do what? Belong to us. Okay? So there are some things what? We can know. Okay, so I don't want you to come to this study and say, "Well, we can't know everything, so we just really aren't going to know anything." No, there are things that God has revealed to us, and they belong to us and our children forever. That we may do all the words of this law. Now, that was under the Old Testament. Things that we want to discuss are primarily going to be focused a lot out of the New Testament. But Jesus says in John chapter eight, verse thirty-two, what? Ye shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And then Peter tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, According as He is, God's divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain to what? Life and God. So He's given us what? All things that we need to know. Okay. Not everything that we can possibly know, because there's some secret things that says belongs to God, but we can know these things. Uh, but I forgot my computer and my slides don't connect, so i got to do both of them. <laughs> they used to do that. So I want to uh, ask that while we're seeking, that while I'm seeking to present the truth, that you do what? That you be like the Bereans and search the Scripture daily what? Whether these things are so. Okay? And that's a key thing, because we all have to do what? Work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. That doesn't mean make our own way, but we have to know what we're doing and do what we're doing on our own. We've got to do it. We've got to obey it. Okay? And we've got to know it in order to obey it. So we've got to do these things on a personal nature. In Romans chapter 14, verse 5, let every man be what? fully persuaded in what? His own mind. So I don't want you, even though I'm the teacher, even though I'm kind of guiding our study, you don't have to mimic everything I say. I want you to know. 
for yourself. And I want you to believe these things as we're searching through these things. I also want to point out before we enter this study, you see this little chart. It's pretty small, relatively speaking. That's a lot of study. Okay? Now, I don't know how long this is going to go. I don't think anybody so far has placed a restraint upon me. And so we may go past three months or whatever, but it just depends on how our study is going. But there's a lot of things we can talk about. This study is huge. There's so much depth of wisdom that we can study this together. And my goal is not to cover everything. Because we'd be here forever. We just got detailed about every little element that we're going to talk about and just take way too long. But hopefully, my goal is, is to cover enough ground that you get a good foundation you're established and when you're studying on your own or whether we're together whether John's preaching or somebody's teaching the Bible class or somebody else is preaching or we have gospel meetings or other times and occasions where we're studying God's word together alone these things will come up in your mind and you can add new things as you're reading along things that we didn't cover in class and connect to these things you can add that to your knowledge of the scriptures so sadly, we cannot cover every scripture either. Sometimes that's an argument made from people about preachers is because we have a certain amount of time and we try to get the most verses we can a lot of times into a sermon or into a Bible class and what happens? Time runs out. <laughs> or you don't cover everything. If you covered every verse on just say, for instance, love, that's going to take months study and cover it. At least the way I study and cover things that I get in detail, I get in depth a lot of times. But hopefully this will still increase our knowledge in God's Word about this subject. I'll try to do my best to cover the material to do it justice. Okay? I'm not going to rush through it so quick that we say, well, we got that done. But we're also not hopefully going to take forever <laughs> to get these things covered. And we'll cover the most part of these things. Now, just to be honest up front, I have a few areas of study that we're going to sidetrack on. Okay? A lot of times it's called excursion. Sometimes it's called chasing rabbits. You ever heard that phrase? Preacher was chasing rabbits. Or the Bible class teacher was chasing rabbits. You ever chase a rabbit? What do they do? They're all over the place, right? They'll go this way, that way. We got rabbits we're trying to keep out of the yard. Good luck with that. But anyways, we chase them and they're scurrying all over the place. You can't hardly stay behind them because they're just going one direction or another. And that's the idea. Sometimes people get into, if they're not careful, and they don't stay focused on a particular subject, you'll be way over here on a completely entirely different subject, way away from the, the first subject that you began on. I'm going to try my best not to go too far. There are, like I said, we'll be just honest straight up front. We're going to have a couple that we're going to go after. But we're not going to... Actually, I didn't change. There we go. I changed this one, but not that one. So we're, we're going to make a little feature every now and then. I'm going to try to keep as close to the main focus as we can. Now, another issue that sometimes I have, okay, I get to thinking, I get to trying to think, well, what am I going to say next? What am I going to do? Sometimes I miss people's hands. Hey, Y'all know, when you raise your hand, you got something to say. If you have a question, please ask it. If you have a comment that you think is going to add to the Bible study, please make that comment. Okay? I encourage participation. But I'm bad, and I already know it. You ain't got to tell me. I'm bad about seeing people's hands because sometimes I just get them on the way. If that happens, if your hand's up for a while and you want to make a comment, you want to make a suggestion or question, and I don't see you, just say, hey, David, <laughs> I had a question, you got a comment. I'm just not going to offend me in the least. Okay? Um, we're going to do things decent in order, of course, but, you know, just kind of be patient for a minute. I'll try to watch for hands. You can ask Nancy, she knows all my classes. I'm bad about it, so it's just me. So 
what I'm saying is just kind of overlook that and forgive me a little bit. <laughs> and if you have a comment or question that you don't feel comfortable asking in class, in class you can see me after services or I like email. Email, we can both look at it whenever we want. My email address is right there, dsinflorida65 at gmail.com. Feel free to email. I'll try to address your question or comment the uh, best way I can. And I have no problem with that. So uh, if you want that email, I'll give it to you later. Uh, okay. All right, now to the chart. Get into our class a little bit. This chart is based upon a certain time frame, a certain time period. As you know, and as you're well aware, think Wednesday night Bible class, you're covering this. The three dispensations, the three ages of time that the Bible mentions. All right? You have the patriarchal age or the patriarchal dispensation, which goes from what time period? Adam, creation, Adam, Adam and Eve, to what? The Moses. To the law of Moses. Okay, not just the Moses himself, but the law. <laughs> okay? You got the law of Moses. Okay? In this period of time, how did God instruct the people in giving, in giving them governance and guidance? And his he talked to the heads of fathers. He talked to the fathers, right? He talked directly to the heads of the family. Okay? That's how he did it. Does he do it that way today? No, there's a little change. There's a little difference, right? We'll get to that in just a minute. But that was a way God dealt with man. Okay? And there was a law there. They knew certain things. Okay? Because one of the things we find out is Cain and Abel did what? They made certain sacrifices. One was pleasing and one wasn't. So what? God must have told them. Okay? They had certain laws. They had things to govern them. It's not written down like it is the old law and the new law, but it's still a law. They had things they had to do to obey God and to please God. We know that from what's said. Alright, then the second dispensation or age is what? Moses we touched on it, right? Mosaic age. Mosaic age. Uh, that went from what? Law of Moses to the cross of Christ. His death. What did he do to the old law? Okay, he fulfilled it, but what? He nailed it to the cross. Doing what? Taking it out of the way. Alright? A whole different thing. Alright? So how did God deal with people during that period of time? He dealt through Moses and, the, and uh, through the law of Moses. Oh, yeah, he dealt through the law of Moses and something else. The prophets and the priests, they, they had this ability too. So, basically, the law and the prophets. Okay? And that's what the Old Testament is composed of. Moses writes the first five books and then the prophets uh, write the majority of the remainder. So, you have God dealing with man that way. Mostly... A written as well as verbal preaching form or, or direct instruction through the prophets and, and that way. Then you have the third dispensation of time, which is referred to many times as the Christian age, the Christian dispensation, which goes from what? The cross of Christ. Because you've got to have a new law. That's what's called the New Testament, right? Because Jesus died to bring into force this law that took away the old law brought in the new law. Okay? And how long does this dispensation last? Till the end. Alright, till the judgment day, the end of time, the end of the world, whatever way you want to describe it, that's that's when it ends. Okay? So how does God speak to man through this dispensation? Through his son, which is now what? The gospel of Christ in the New Testament. Okay? So that's what this chart is going to be focused on. This last dispensation, you'll notice, uh, not that box, but this, these two boxes below, there's some steps there. Those are the steps of salvation, which involves here, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. 
which is in what? The new law. Okay? They didn't have to do that under the Old Testament. Not those particular steps. They still had to obey God. Don't get me wrong. But this was a New Testament uh, concept. So this is based upon New Testament principles. If we wanted to study how God dealt with man under these other two, then we would need some slightly different uh, elements of our chart. So don't be confused about that. This chart speaks to where we're now living. Okay? That's what this chart is. Anybody that is alive upon the face of the earth today fits somewhere on this chart in these, in these boxes because we're they're alive and living. Okay? These first three boxes on the left-hand side. So, I just want to make that clear. Also, I want to make this note. While there are some moral and general truths that are consistent with God's will throughout history, such as obeying and loving Him, all the way through history, that's one of the demands of God. Another demand of God we can see very clearly in the patriarchal, the Mosaic, and the Christian is what? Do not murder. Okay? Each dispensation also had its own law. They're not all the same. Okay? So you're not bringing in portions of a law that is simply a general principle throughout all. Okay? It's each in its own law. Okay? We must understand that because if you start talking about, well, you're rolling over, you're bringing in this, you're bringing in that, then you're picking and choosing, and then you're going to have a problem because some people may want to pick and choose other things to bring in from another law that they want to do. Okay? That's why we're governed by the New Testament. Now, in the old law and the prophets, they were governed by that law. We're not. Though there are some principles that the Bible teaches is consistent throughout all. Such as do not murder. Is that a sin under the patriarchal dispensation? How do we know that? One example is what? Cain and Abel. You got to prove Cain killed and Abel? <laughs> no, he didn't. So God must have told him, can't kill people. Okay? Well, under the law of Moses. Is that a law? <coughs> Thou shalt not what? Kill. Kill or murder. And it cold blood murder. You're not to do that. Well, people faced punishment back then if they did that under the old law. Well, what about the new law? We're just supposed to run around and kill people today? No. It says don't kill people. Under the new law. He even goes a little further. We're not even supposed to think about killing somebody. Yeah. Think in your heart, you're murdered. So exactly. that's what involved with hatred. So so even though there's same laws, in all three time periods, they were under a certain law. Okay? If you're under the patriarchal law, it said certain things. If you're under the law of Moses, it was it said certain things. Now we're under New Testament law. Gospel of Christ. That's a separate thing. Though there are similarities, yes. But they are all different and stand on their own. You don't run back and say, well, I'm going to be under the patriarchal law. Can't do that. You're in a different time period. You can't go back and say, I'm under the Mosaic law. Can't do that. It's a different time period. Jesus nailed that law to the cross. It's clear it's taken out of the way. Now you have the New Testament. That's the thing's that we must look at. So now that we've determined where our chart fits in our particular perspective, you got to have your mind set on the right thing. you got to kind of know what David's aiming at. Sometimes that's difficult, so I'll watch for hands. Alright? Now that we're thinking about that, I want to go to that chart. Chart. Like I said, I didn't have room for everything <laughs> that we could put on there. You got the back of the page, right small, because there's a lot of stuff for us to bring another piece of paper. <laughs> but we're going to cover quite a bit of ground. I'm just going to be up front with that. We're going to cover quite a bit of scriptures for each of the points that we're covering, because I don't want you just to believe it because I say it. 
As I mentioned earlier, I hope I'm teaching the truth. I hope I'm presenting the truth to you. That's my goal. That's my desire. But I want you to see it. I want you to know it's true. And I want you to believe it's true because it's true, not because I said so. Okay? I can say a lot of things. I wouldn't intentionally. They're wrong. But that's not what I want you to believe. I want you to believe the truth. I want you to believe God's word because it's true. Okay? And then if somebody wants to argue with you, you don't have to say, well, I wonder what they would think. <laughs> you say, I wonder what God thinks and go to the Bible. That's where your defense is. Okay? Because people can argue with me because I'm a human. I make mistakes. Yes, I make mistakes. But these things we're going to study come to show scripture for backing up what we say. So you can rest assured it's true. You may see, I don't know if this thing's got a laser beam. I don't think it does. Uh, the last chart was the last one I had, had one. But up in the left hand corner there on your chart, that's the first section. That's going to be our first section of study. We're going to get into that a little bit. We're not going to get into the verses that you're going to be able to read because I took up a little time kind of telling you how we're going to operate. Hopefully, get you set up that way. But we're going to read some. All right, the next box down to the left is where sinners and accountable people are. We're just doing a brief overview right now. The next box to the right is where the church or Christians. That's their box. Okay? Then you have certain error, uh, broken lines, uh, lines about sin and death, uh, restoration, falling. Then you have the physical body and death. All those lines run out of those boxes and cross physical death there. That little uh, line with an arrow at the bottom or a point goes to the tomb. And then you get to the Hadean realm. Now, right now is where we start going, well, I don't know everything about that. The fact is we know a lot about those first three boxes because we're living. Okay. We're actually experiencing them. We, the Bible says a lot about them. But now once we start getting beyond physical death, the Bible says things. We're going to see what the Bible says, but it's not as much information as we're actually experiencing these first three. Okay? So we have the Hadean realm. Then we have uh, on the great day, the resurrection, second coming of Christ and the judgment. All three of those happen pretty much simultaneously. Bang, bang, bang. And then you have heaven and hell. That's where we're going. So that's why the study is from birth or the cradle to what? To eternity. Okay? So that's what I said. There's a lot, a lot of information that we're going to deal with. Now, like I said, you want to start turning in your Bibles, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 31. We're just going to read these. They're going to kind of give us a brief overview. Okay? That's why I picked these six. Again, we can have chart after chart after chart of verses about the things that's on the chart that I've got for the handout. But we're going to kind of concise things right now, then we'll start expanding a little bit as we go on and visit each of those boxes. You might also, since you're close to it, turn to Genesis chapter 4. And then hopefully you've written the others down, because I'm going to have slides that show some of these verses. Some are going to be so small you might not be able to read them, so that's why I want you to have your Bible right there in front of you. All right. Genesis chapter 1. Verses 26 through verse 31. Creation. Everybody knows Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2. We're dealing with the chart. Okay? So we're not going to deal with all six days of creation, then the seventh day, what happens? God rest. Right, so you have six days of creation. We're going to get specific with certain parts of creation. Involving, number one, the creation of what? 
man, that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with what our situation is in life. Okay? So that's what we need to understand. We need to understand that God did what? God created man. And God said, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. I use King James, so that's what you'll see up there a lot of times. KJV, that's what that means. I also like New Americans, so that'll pop in from time to time. Uh, and it'll show. And God said, let us... Who's he talking to? God here. God here. Remember we talked about that in one of the sermons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are the ones that are eternal. They have no beginning. They have no end. I understand that's a hard concept. Because we're human. We have physical elements of us. We have flesh. And we are limited. We have a beginning. And our physical body has an end. At least till what? It's resurrected. <laughs> Okay, and then it's different, so it's not the same thing. But also within us, there is what? Soul. Soul, or spirit. Use those two terms interchangeably. Later in our study, uh, I think probably when we get to physical death, I have a study about that word soul as it's used in the Bible. And again, I'm going to try to condense that. That's a huge subject. I'll try to condense that. But that's an interesting study. So hopefully you'll look forward to that. That's what he says. Let us make man after our, or in our what? <laughs> image. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created. So notice the words make in verse 26 and created. Which shows there's a beginning here. Some people have the concept that man is eternal just as God is eternal. That's not taught in the scriptures. Okay? Man has a beginning. God is the only thing eternal in both directions. Has no beginning, has no end. He is God. He can do that. I have trouble kind of wrapping my brain around that because like I said, we're, we're, we deal with time. And we deal with this physical body which is limited but God's not that way. we got to understand He's beyond all that. Okay? And we just accept it because that's just the way it is. So made and created. Created man in His own image in the image of God created he, me, Him what? Male and female created He them. Alright, so God created man. So there's our first thought. Now we go to Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 and verse 2. Now we have the process of family and descendants and so forth. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived, and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his uh, brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So now we have the process of conception and birth and so forth and so on, which is where our chart kind of starts with us. Like I said, that's what we're going to do with that top little box, that small one up there. So first we're laying kind of some groundwork of what the Bible says. Now, in Acts chapter 17, that's probably a little too small to read from where you're at. That's why I said get your Bibles. So get your Bibles and look at that. Unless you can read that, it's fine. But I kind of thought it probably would be too small. Paul is preaching a sermon on a place we oftentimes refer to as what? Who knows what this is taking place? Mars Hill, right? This is one of my favorite sermons in the Bible outside of Jesus sermons <laughs> that Paul makes because he says a lot in a very small time frame or a very small usage of words. Okay? Sometimes people have difficulty with that. Sometimes I have difficulty with that. Trying to be concise but yet get it all in. Okay? You want to just keep going and keep going and keep explaining. But sometimes you just got to say it and let it go. And then if people don't understand it, then expand on it. So 
That's what we're doing. But Paul is preaching to these individuals on Mars Hill. Now, these individuals are a little bit different than the Hebrews. Because he has come to this area, and what has he found on Mars Hill? Idols. Idol after idol after idol after idol. And just so they had missed one, what did they build? An idol to what? The unknown God. And one of the reasons I love Paul's sermon is because he starts right there. He sees something that they're familiar with, and he says, I want to tell you about this one. I want to tell you about this God you don't know. And that's what this sermon's about. So let's look at it. Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you're too superstitious or religious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. So he says, here it is. You made this idol, I want to tell you about this stuff. I want to tell you about this God. And he's not going to be an idol, and he's going to make that clear. Look what he says. God that made what? The world. This ain't no idol. Okay, he already starts beating up these false gods and these false idols that can do nothing, and that's the way it's always been, even in the Old Testament. When you see the, the contest, God's always winning because these idols can't do anything. That's the whole point. Why you serve them, they can't do anything. God made the world and all things therein, seeing that He is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. This is not there. Neither is He worshipped with man's hands. In other words, you can't build something to worship Him. That's not what He's about. You can't build an idol to worship not what he's about. As though he needed anything. God doesn't need us to do these things for him. God, he doesn't need us to build an idol. Not that way. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. So there's our chart. See how Paul simplified it? And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth. So there's creation and there's mankind. All the races, races and descendants, it's all right there. And hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. That they should do what? Here should be what we're about. Seek the Lord. If happily they might feel after him and find him, though what? He's not far from any of us. Okay? That's his uh, omnipresence. God's everywhere. Again, that's a concept difficult to handle, even with Zoom. We may be able to be a lot of places, but we can't be everywhere. But God is. Okay? That's what makes him God. For in him, in who? In God. We live and move and what? Have our very being. Just Adam and Eve. Remember, that's what we read in Genesis chapter 1. God created man and then God created a woman. You can read further and see how he did it. But again, we're condensing things. Is that what he's talking about here? Yeah, okay, God created Adam and Eve. Yeah, okay. What did we read later on? In chapter 4, what happened? Conception. Childbirth. Continuing on, what? Generation after generation after generation. Where did it all start? Who gave us all of that? God. God is responsible for you being here. Because He created all things. He's responsible. So we need to make... Sometimes we think about things in the far off reaches when it comes to the Bible instead of saying, I need to make this personal. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, it happened all back then and, and Adam and Eve and then Cain and Abel and on and on. We need to see how this relates to us. 
And that's what Paul's kind of kind of doing here in this sermon. He says, this is coming down to you. If it were not for this God that I'm talking about, the one true living God, you would not even exist. But it's through Him you live and move and have your being. As, also, as certain also of your own poets had said, for we also are His offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we are not the thing that the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. In other words, you can't make it. He's already existed. And He existed and He created you. He gave you your being. He created all things. Then the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now what? Commands all men everywhere. Who's that leave out? People, people over in China, we don't have to worry about the souls of those people. God don't care about them. We don't have to worry about people in Russia or, or in Alabama <laughs> or, or North Carolina or any, any other place. No, He cares about everybody. And He commands all men everywhere to do what? To repent. Why? Because, now here gets to the end of our chart, if we're still up there, you can still hopefully have one at your seat, because He has appointed a day. What's that day? You would kill most of them, we call it Judgment Day. Okay? The Judgment. Okay, and we'll get into that particular study. But you see how Paul is basically covering the whole chart? Sums it up. That's why I'm using this verse. In the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Who's that? Jesus. Jesus is going to be the judge. God says it. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men that he had raised him, Jesus, from the dead. There's your evidence, there's your proof that Jesus has the authority not only to be the Son of God, but what? The judge. Okay? You don't want just anybody to be the judge, right? Even in, even in our court system. I don't want just anybody to be a judge. I want somebody who's trained, got some experience, got some knowledge of what the laws are, so they can judge correctly. Because if I'm judging some things, I don't judge correctly, don't I? If he's the judge, if he's judging us from the book. Absolutely. And so that's the reason we need to know what the book has to say. And that's what we'll get into when we get to the judgment day and what's going to judge us. So you're getting ahead of me. That's the point. That's good. That's good. Not a problem at all. But you're headed to where we're getting. <laughs> okay? So he's given us assurance in that, that he's raised him from the dead. I got a couple more verses, and then we can probably have to stop. And then next week, you'll become more involved. Okay? You're going to become more involved. Right now, I'm just throwing out some questions. John 3, 16 through 21. Another passage that covers a great deal of material. And again, these are just kind of starting off verses. Get that mind and get those juices in the mind flowing and circulating. Because I don't want you just to think about it during class. I want you to think about these things sometime during the week. Okay? Think about some of these things. These things are more powerful than just, just once a day. <laughs> okay? I want you to mull all these things over. John 3, 16. Everybody knows that one, right? What do you know about the rest of the verses? Well, some people probably don't want to have a clue the rest of the verses exist. I know y'all do, but John 3, 16. Go with me now. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God, verse 17, sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. That's going to kind of be in the middle part there of our, our chart system. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Well, why is that? What have we been talking about in some of our other classes and sermons? Belief involves what? Because Christ, Christ is the only hope we have. 
Christ and the and obedience you of Christ is now, your only obedience. Or your only you're, a, you're an unbeliever. Absolutely. And if you don't believe, what? You're Why does he say you're condemned already? Because you're not going to obey. If you believe, you're going to obey. If you don't believe, what? You're not going to do anything. Okay? And that's why he's talking in this way. And that's why he says you're you're condemned already because you're not taking the steps necessary to do what? Be saved, which means what? A person can be? What's the opposite to say? Lost. Okay, that's covering our chart. You see why I'm using this verse yet? All right. Verse 19, and this is the condemnation that light, then you go back to John chapter 1, he deals with that light. Light has come into the world, and men love what? Darkness rather than light because why? Doing bad things. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth does what? comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God, which is the obedience concept to our chart. Alright? Now, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through verse 20. A lot of people know this passage, probably again can quote it, because it is a familiar passage. Many times we refer to it as what? What sometimes it's called? The Great Commission. Yes. One of them, anyway. <laughs> Jesus said, came and spake unto them, saying, All power, all authority, is given unto me, where? In heaven and in earth. What's that leave out? No. You got it all. Go ye therefore. So here he's talking to his disciples. Go ye therefore and do what? Teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe what? All things whatsoever I command you, and lo, I'm with you all way, what? Even unto the end of the world or age. Amen. <coughs> so again, that concept of our chart. Jesus covers quite a bit of ground there. Teach, baptize, teach more. Okay, one of the excursions we're gonna make is what does a person have to know in order to be baptized? Do I have to know every passage between Genesis 1-1 and, and Revelation at the end of the book? Absolutely. I don't have to be able to quote all those passages to be saved. I just know, got to know what I need to do to be saved. That's what the people asked. When they were confronted with salvation, what they say? What shall we do or what must we do to be on the Okay? That's what Jesus is talking about here. I think I've got one more Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through verse 31, then we'll have to stop. We're out of time. We're out of time. This one pretty much, we're going to cover this when we get to the, about the middle of the chart. When we're dealing with the Hadean realms, I'm not going to bother reading that right now. That one, I'm going to take out of my chart for the next time. We do it. <laughs> so that's where we're heading. That's what we're thinking. Next week, Lord willing, we will get into that first box. Look at that first box. What is that first box dealing with? Somebody tell me real quick. Birth, infancy, and childhood and innocence. That's what we're going to deal with. So think about that. Be ready for your comments next week. Thank you for your patience this morning. Thank you for thinking with me along these things. Next week we're going to start there. And then we'll open up more for discussion if you wish to do so. Thank you for your time this morning.